again, so I'm using your tweets as if this is like Plato, right? <laughs> <laughs> as if this is well thought out novels that you've written. Uh, you tweeted, GPT-4 is listening to us now. Um, this is one way of asking, what are the limitations of GPT-3 when it scales? So what do you think will be the capabilities of GPT-4, GPT-5, and so on? What are the limits of this approach? So uh, obviously when we are writing things right now, uh, everything that we are writing now is going to be training data yeah. for the next generation of machine learning models. So yes, of course, GPT-4 is listening to us. And I think the tweet is already a little bit older and the, uh, we now have Wudao and uh, we have a number of other systems that basically are placeholders for GPT-4. Don't know what open AI's plans are in this See, regard. I read that tweet in several ways. So one is obviously everything you put on the internet is used as training data. But in a second way I read it is in a, uh, we talked about agency. I, I read it as almost like GPT-4 is intelligent enough to be choosing to listen. So not only like did a programmer tell it to collect this data and use it for training, I almost, saw the humorous angle, which is like, it has achieved AGI kind of thing. Well, the thing is, um, could we be already be living in GPT-5? <laughs> <laughs> so GPT-4 is listening and GPT-5 actually constructing the entirety of the so, uh, reality. Where of course, we, in some sense, uh, the what everybody is trying to do right now in AI is to extend the transformer to be able to deal with video. And uh, there are very promising extensions, right? There's a uh, work by Google that is called Perceiver, and that is uh, overcoming some of the limitations of the transformer by letting it learn the topology of the different modalities separately, and uh, by uh, training it to find better input features. So the basically feature abstractions that are being used by uh, this um, successor to GPT-3 are uh, chosen such a way that it's able to deal with video input. Mm -hmm. And there is more to be done. So I, one of the limitations of GPT-3 uh, is that it's uh, amnesiac. So it forgets everything beyond the two pages that it currently reads, also during generation, not just during learning. Do you think that's fixable within the space of deep learning? Can you just make a bigger, bigger, bigger input? No. Uh, I don't think that our own uh, working memory is infinitely large. It's probably also just a few thousand bits. But uh, what you uh, can do is you can structure this working memory. So instead of just force feeding this thing, a certain thing that it can, has to focus on, and it's not allowed to focus on anything else with its network, you uh, allow it to construct its own working memory, as we do, right? When we are reading a book, uh, it's not that we are focusing our attention in such a way that we can only remember the current page. We will also try to remember other pages and yeah. try to uh, undo what we learned from them or modify what we learned from them. We might get up and take another book from the shelf. We might go out and ask somebody. Right? We can uh, edit our working memory in any way that is useful to put uh, a context together that allows us to uh, draw the right inferences and to learn the right things. So this ability to perform experiments on the world based on uh, an attempt to become fully coherent and to achieve causal closure to achieve a certain aesthetic of your modeling. That uh, is something that eventually needs to be done. And uh, at the moment, we are skirting this in some sense by building systems that are larger and faster so they can use dramatically larger resources than human beings can do and much more training data to get to models that in some sense are already way superhuman and in other ways are laughingly incoherent. So do you think uh, sort of making uh, the systems like what would you say, multi-resolutional? So like some uh, some of the language models are focused on two pages, some are focused on uh, two books, some are focused on two years of reading, some are focused on a lifetime. Like So it's like stacks, of, it's the GPT-3s all the way down. And you want to have gaps in between them. So it's not necessarily two years, there's no gaps. It's things out of two years or out yeah. of 20 years or 2,000 years or 2 billion years yeah. where you are just selecting those bits that are predicted to be the most useful ones to understand what you're currently doing. And this prediction itself requires a very complicated model. And that's the actual model that you need to be making. Yeah. It's not just that you are trying to understand the relationships between things, but 
what you need to make relationships, uh, discover relationships over. I wonder what that thing looks like, what the architecture for that, for the thing that's able to have that kind of model. That... I, I think it needs more degrees of freedom than the current models have. So it starts out with the fact that you uh, possibly don't just want to have a feed forward model, mm -hmm. but you want it to be fully recurrent. And to make it fully recurrent, you probably need to loop it back into itself and allow it to skip connections. Once you do this, right, when you are, you are predicting the next frame and your internal next frame in every moment, and you uh, are able to skip connection, it means that signals can travel from the output of the uh, network into the middle of the network faster than the inputs do. Do you think it can still be differentiable? Do you think it still can be a neural network? Uh, sometimes it can, and sometimes it cannot. So it uh, it can still be a neural network, but not a fully differentiable one. And when you want to deal with non-differentiable ones, you need to have an attention system that is discrete and low-dimensional and can perform grammatical operations. You need to be able to perform program synthesis. You need to be able to backtrack in this operations that you perform on this thing. And this thing needs a model of what it's currently doing. And I think this is exactly the purpose of our own consciousness. Yeah, the program thing is a tricky one with neural networks. 